Hey there, Postal here. Today we are taking out a plane that you don't actually see all that often. You don't hear about all that often. Um, really on a line that you don't hear or see about all that often. This is the Key 94 Mark II. This is a Tier 8 Japanese fighter. Actually, the only Tier 8 Japanese fighter in the game. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, everybody. Certainly the only Tech Tree fighter. Um... Which is kind of weird because you think, okay, you're going down the zero lines, but at tier 8 they suddenly veer off uh, into multi rollness Whereas the army fighter line continues all the way to tier 10, although tier 9 and tier 10 are technically German, but that's a different story. So what is this plane? And we're going to try to take a look and see, well, why don't people play this plane? Why don't people even talk about this plane? Um, on paper, it's kind of this weird amalgamation of stats, right? Um, you go from the key 84 at tier 7, which might honestly be one of the... It's definitely the best turn fighter at tier 7 in random battles. Um, might be the best tier 7 fighter, although, man, the I-220 is really good. Uh, you go from the key 84 to this plane, which, you know, has more altitude, has better maneuverability, I think. Uh, I don't correct count me on that one um with the same awesome cannons and a little bit more airspeed and so you'd think well okay so why why isn't this plane um something that everybody and their brother happens to be flying at tier eight um well the issue i think might be those cannons actually yes these cannons that you see here that are absolutely tearing up everything that's in front of me excuse me friendly. Um, that can be an issue when the range of these particular cannons is so incredibly short. Uh, the 30 millimeter cannons have a less than 2,000 foot range, and the 20 millimeter cannons have barely more than 2,000 foot range. And so your, your inability to reach out and touch somebody can cause issues for sure. The vast majority of people are just going to take out their Spitfire. Something that has longer range, much longer range, 20 millimeter cannons. Consistent 20 millimeter cannons. Something with good air speed, something with great maneuverability in the Spitfire. So very often you see Spitfire 14s out and about. Uh, but I think this plane favors, uh, com compares quite favorably to that Spitfire 14. Yeah, the cannons are super short range. Yeah, 30 millimeter cannons can be wonky. If they don't hit, uh, you're not doing a whole heck of a lot of damage, right? Um, but, if we're focusing on what we can focus on with this plane, and that is go for planes like this one right here. Relatively low altitude bombers where my 30 millimeter cannons are gonna be able to do some heavy work. There we go, we just captured a mining facility because we were able to help our ground attackers and bombers um, actually capture that sector by killing the bomber in there. And there are TU-2 on one third health, one quarter health maybe. And you can see I'm at a pretty high altitude, an altitude that a freaking zero could only hope and wish to be at. Technically, this plane has uh, better altitude performance than a Spitfire 14. We all know Spitfire 14 can be uh, can can definitely get up to the higher altitudes when it feels like it. This plane does lack on airspeed, just overall engine power more than airspeed. You can see I'm at a reasonable airspeed. It is tier eight though. You're going to run into tier nine battles with everything going you know 450 to 500 miles an hour consistently. Um, barely losing this. Let's go ahead and get this garrison. Garrisons win games. Nope, we'll ignore those bombers. I think that really is um, the biggest weakness of this plane. Yeah, the guns are short range, but you can work around that. Excellent maneuverability. Great altitude performance. Um, it's the airspeed that just kills me with this plane. As it does typically with a lot of the Japanese planes. 
Oh, overheated not only my 20s, but I mean, not only my 30s, but my 20s. All right, let's go ahead and let's keep on moving along. You can see there's no, um, no issue with the damage output. That's for sure. The biggest issue, again, is just being able to be where you need to be when you want to be there. Let's head back to the center. I guess we're just going to keep on keeping on when it comes to um, garrisons. Just keep capturing each of the garrisons. I'm going to stay down at this middle altitude here. I know there's some planes that are above me, but I don't want to lose my um, mediocre airspeed as it is to get up to the higher altitude anyway. A little bit too close to be effective versus this guy, but he's on fire, so uh, we'll be fine. Keep him at punching distance, and that way we can be more effective. Let's move along to the next garrison, right? And again, the the there's so many things to like about the Key 94 that it is just a shame that this the airspeed is is so lacking. Um, that being said, I have not specialized this plane. Uh, there's a pogo going very fast in the opposite direction, so we're going to just ignore him. We need to be capturing sectors, so let's do that. Something else I'm doing that you might not be catching on to is I have the ability to fire just my 20mm cannons. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I am definitely doing that from time to time. So that way I can let my 30 millimeter cannons cool off while I'm still firing something. And this freaking flak is going to kill me, isn't it? It is. Shoot. The old F3 maybe. Here we go. Dive down. Is victory close? Is it really? Uh, I don't like my hit point amount here. Can't keep going in a straight line. And see, 2,200 feet is going to be ineffective with my cannons. This guy's moving towards me, so let's move towards him. Oh no, the heavy fighter's inbound. Shoot! I think we're going to win this anyway. Ah. Dang it. Um, but you can see where we really needed to keep pushing sector to sector, try to get these um, sectors captured. We were able to luckily hold on to the mining facility for the majority of the time. Um, is them, are they going to capture, they're going to, oh shoot. It's six seconds so that they're going to get the mining facility boost here might kill us. That doesn't look like it. Okay, good. So we were able to squeeze him a Campbell out of that. Um, yeah, let's take a look at another battle. So we are in our second battle in the Key 94 Mark II. Um, we'll see how this goes. I've had a handful of games be over incredibly quickly. Um, and I'd like to say it's this plane, <laughs> or at least me in this plane. Um, this plane is actually very good at capturing sectors. Um, you know, 30 millimeter cannons are good at that kind of stuff, obviously, right? And so I'm able to take down heavy or high health pool planes very, very easily. And not have any issues with you know those those kind of attacking situations. I'm sending everybody else to the military base, um, and I'm gonna get this garrison on my own because I can. I'm in a plane that can do it. We're saving our boost for when we need to get to another sector. It's really the best time to use this uh, use the boost in this plane. And that way, I'm not using it just to stick with, with enemy planes. I can actually... Ow. That hurt. One thing I have noticed is this plane is incredibly fragile. Um, 
I sure wish I had me some engine power. I might actually lose this garrison just because I've uh, took too many hits on the chin there. Yeah, I'm definitely going to actually lose this. <laughs> yep, I'm dead. God dang it. Couldn't get my guns on target there, get my engine knocked out, just got... Oh, man. Lost a lot of hit points really quickly. This is a relatively big plane. I mean, for a fighter. Um, oh, man. Let's see what we can do here. Luckily, we were able to capture, or my team was able to capture that. Still going to go to the garrison, because it's just stupid of me, and I'm annoyed with my freaking gameplay. Not that the gameplay did it, but I did that. So we're going to see how this, uh, how we can turn this around here really quick at a quick. Alrighty. Cannons, please. What in the world? These heavy fighters are just uh, messing with my brain today. All right, let's head to the center. Get our boost on so that we can actually get there quicker. Uh, we haven't even ran into either of the fighters here. P-51H could be a huge pain in the butt simply because you know, they can outspeed and out-altitude me. Um, Keen 84 could be a huge pain in the butt. I mean, you see how easily this plane loses hit points. So, Key 84 certainly has the um, firepower to cause issues. Oh my goodness, seriously. Like, freaking two hits and I'm dead. Diggity dang it, getting torn up here. I thought that if 7F was going towards the uh, military base there, I guess he turned around. Obviously, he turned around. Got to pay more attention to what's in front of you, Postal. All right, how many times have I died? Like, freaking four times already, I feel like. Um, uh, where do I go? Where do I go? I guess I'm going to just go to the center here and pivot. Do what this plane does best. You know, I was just talking about this plane doing well um, in capturing type scenarios. Which it can do. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what it's built for. Um, and clearly, I was just showing the, uh, the issues with trying to be the only thing in the sector. The plane still is not built to take that, um, take on, take hits, I should say. you cannons for working. Alright, let's get our speed on here because this is getting frustrating. Don't frustrate me plane. There we go. Hey, if I aim properly, the guns work. It's amazing. Aim further out. Aim further out. When in doubt with 30 millimeter cannons, aim further out. Should be able to capture the. Never mind. Gotta love when planes decide it's time to die in the sector that you're trying to capture. Like, what are you doing? Why would you do that? You just did all that work. Oh my goodness, people keep dying in this sector. You know what? You hate to do it, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. There we go. Good god, I had to shoot the ground. Tents, though, and even the tents, you saw how friggin' long it took for me to get those tents knocked out. So do not, do not uh, make shooting the ground a priority in this plane. Really short range, and they just don't do ground damage very well. Alright, so let's go ahead and 
game over here. Aim over here. Try to get a little bit higher up. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't need 57 millimeter. That will totally obliterate me. If I don't obliterate him first. All right, let's um, keep on heading down here. We need to get this military base ASAP. Oh, there's so many friggin' planes over here. Holy friggin' crap. This is not where this plane likes to be. As good of a as a dogfighter as it can be, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one type dogfighter. A group like this, this plane, we've already seen that this plane can't take too many hits. And we're gonna see here. Oh, squall line. Hey, man, my sound is really messed up, isn't it? I mean, I think I, it's my computer. It's not the. I think I accidentally lowered it on the computer. I don't think it's the game this time. Let's get our boost on. Um, let's see here. Let's get close enough. Here we go. Finally. Can we, can we, can we, can we, can we, can we? I've got a B-32 who's got a million marks on his plane, so I'd like to think he knows what he's doing. We just need to actually get, get them available here to, oh, come on, key 84. No, don't do this to me. There we go. So like the one, um, Am I just going to shoot the ground anyway here? Ha! That's t <laughs> I don't know if that took it or the enemy plane dying in the sector took it, uh, but that was pretty funny. All right, let's see here. The F7F's dead and out. I don't know if he died and quit or quit and, and then quit. Uh, so let's head to the center again here really quick. Let's get some altitude performance. I'm hanging down really low. I don't really need to do. We do need to watch out for these planes. I'm not on the high enough, high enough health to really take these kind of hits. The 20 millimeter cannons, like a Typhoon or a Tempest, will do to me. And so, oh crud! They got this sector anyway. Um, come on. We're not going to lose this, are we? But I don't want to lose it. Nope, he's a little bit too far away. He's actually going to be more difficult to kill than that guy. I'm not going to go chasing a Tempest. Um, okay, maybe I will now that he's coming back. I'm not chasing him. He's coming to me. Come to me. Nope, not like that. I said not like that. Can I save this sector? Yes. Excellent. Um, what is that plane? A key 93. Oh, he's the last guy. So you know what? Let's go. Oh, he's going for the heavy fighters over here. So let's just head to the center. I don't have the airspeed, even against the tier seven um, heavy fighter, to go ahead and um, chase him down. So it's just it's the biggest issue with this plane. We've already spoke about it. Is this lack of speed? It's got so many other good qualities, but um, lack of airspeed is definitely, definitely something that I uh, will be focusing on when it comes to specializing this plane, because you've got plenty, plenty of uh, maneuverability and firepower for sure. Felt like I did more than 11,000 personal points, but you know, sometimes it is what it is. Let's head on back. I guess I did die a million times, didn't I? Oh yeah. All right, in that first battle, we were able to get 15 kills. Um, a lot of kind of less than healthy planes that we were attacking there, but hey, take advantage of what you can take advantage of, right? 
Um, and overall, we were just able to, to you know, put in our work. I mean, we flipping did so much more than everybody else on the team. Um, and, and I think we were able to win just by basically making the garrisons a buffer between them being able to capture our mining facilities and not. Um, and yeah, just putting putting the fighter in, um, to uh, good use, putting it in the best position to be able to win in that first battle. Alright, second battle in the uh, Key 94 Mark II. 15 kills again, uh, less air damage this time, but actually did some ground damage. That's pretty funny. Um, bunch of capture points. Yeah, like I said, I guess, you know, dying the two times right in the beginning is just kind of moronic, but it is what it is. Um, we were able to... Oh, I didn't realize they're JU-287. We had a third player? We had an RB-17. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. But, oh, well. Um, well, good, I guess, that the JU-288 didn't uh, completely own us there, to be honest. I wasn't really seeing him in any of that kind of stuff, so... Anyway, we were able to put our... Key 94 into a into where it best fits, right? You need to be mindful of its inability to take hits. You need to be mindful of its airspeed, but otherwise it can be a very effective plane. And you can see right here, the Key 94 Mark II and the Spitfire 14 compare very favorably to each other. Um, fact of the matter is I don't have either of these planes specialized, which is just mind-boggling considering the Spitfire 14 was the first tier 8 plane I ever had. Um, but the Key 94 actually has significantly better altitude performance. Um, the Spitfire has slightly better maneuverability, but the Key has just... Basically everything else across the board is the same. So I really do feel like the thing that makes the Spitfire stand out from or be the go-to plane compared to the Key 94 could be a couple different things. One could just be the lines more popular. You know, we are on the North American and European servers, and so you know, North American and European planes are typically going to be more popular anyway. Um, but we all know that the, the altitude performance on the Spitfire 14 is not a true number. We've all seen in Spitfires up at 10,000 feet doing stuff that you would not expect a Spitfire to be able to do. And the 20 millimeter cannons, very, very good range on the Spitfire 14. And I think that actually makes the biggest difference. You know, the range, the uh, 2,500 feet, uh, yeah, they're just 20 millimeter cannons compared to the 30 millimeter cannons that you get with the Key 94. But that range distance, um, difference, excuse me, is significant. You can definitely tell a difference. You've got to be a lot closer on the Key 94. And the boostability of this plane just isn't quite there at tier 8 where you'd want it to be. Um, if the range on the cannons was longer, I, I really think that this plane would be the more popular of the two planes between this and the Spitfire 14. It's just you have to be... There's there's a sweet spot. Too close and your cannons are just missing because you're too close. Um, too far away and you're not able to, to even hit them, right? The Spitfire 14 has a bigger sweet spot, basically. Don't take that sentence out of context. And I, I just, I think, is, is one of the main reasons why the Spitfire 14 is flown as often as it is compared to the Key 94. Because I tell you what, at Tier 7, the Key 84, I'll take the Key 84 any day over the Spitfire from, uh, 9. Um, but the overall line for the Spitfire line is probably the better line. After the Key 94, the Key 162s are not my favorite, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, yeah, they're okay. Anyway, hope you uh, enjoyed this particular, these two battles. I really like the Key 94. Um, it's been a long time since I've actually played it, but I can say that about a lot of the planes that I play in this game because, you know, every every other day I'm playing a different plane, so to try to get to, through 200-plus planes um, is going to take me 400-plus days. And so, yeah, sometimes it'll be a long time between playing planes. Uh, maybe somebody should request this next time I live stream. I don't know. <laughs> I'd love to hear your opinion on the Key 94 Mark II. Do you have this plane? Have you even thought about getting this plane? This is the line that you've completely ignored. Um, and if you have both the Key 94 and the Spitfire 14, do you agree with my assessment? Is there a reason why you play your Spitfire 14 more than the Key 94? Because I'm willing to bet you probably do. 
uh, just because I cannot tell you the last time I saw a Key94 out on the battlefield. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Love to hear your comments down below, or feel free to hop in my Discord, and I'll see you next time. Bye.